So let's remember where we all began. We all drew right angle triangles, right? That was the one thing I said, make sure you all do this. Um, make them whatever right angle triangles you like, but we have to all start with those. Okay, so Pythagoras' theorem really begins here. In right angle triangles, and then we wrote, this, um, we wrote this equation down in the middle, but that equation kind of doesn't say very much. In fact, in fact, if you look at this you know, a week in the future, and you're like, what was that thing talking about? You might forget that we were actually doing constructions and drawing things. You might just see all these letters and think, I don't remember what any of that's referring to. So that's why I put some words here to explain what's going on. Uh, in fact, um, someone in their feedback form wrote that one of the things they love about, I think it was drama, um, is that it allows you to express yourself in different ways. And on the board, what you can see is us expressing the one same idea in three different ways. There's a picture, it's visual. There's these uh, symbols, so symbolic is very short, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And then we have all these words, so this is verbal, right? Verbal, visual, and symbolic. They're fancy words, but they're just different ways of looking at the same thing. What does a squared plus b squared mean? It means we're adding up two things. It's a sum. And what are we adding up? We're adding up two squares. Um, which squares are we adding? Do you remember why we named a and b a and b? What, why did we name them first? Yeah, go ahead. They were the shorter sides, right? We, start, we just did them in increasing size, right? So A and B were the shorter sides. And the squares that sit on top of those shorter sides, that's what we're adding up. When you do that, they equal to the big square. The square on the longer side. Um, the longer side's a bit of an awkward way of saying things, by the way, so we introduce a new word. Hypotenuse, H-Y-P-O-T-E-N-U-S-E. -E. I've seen about... 50 different misspellings of that word. It is notoriously difficult to spell, so that's why I've put it there nice and big for you. It's a bit easier to say than the longer side, which is three words, because like I said, mathematicians are lazy. So, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. If your diagram, because I know we all sort of struggled with this a little bit because I asked you to do something challenging. Um, in your book, if it's not quite matching up, here's what I'd love you to do to finish, okay? Um, we're going to draw every time, all of us this time, the same right angle triangle. You know how you all did different ones? This time we're going to do the same one. And I want you to do it in this particular way. Measure this out so that the lengths are these particular lengths. Make this, um, this sort of short squat side here, make it exactly three centimeters long. This one down the bottom, make it four centimeters long. And then join them up. And then I want you to measure how long it is once you've joined up those two sides. Can you do that for me? All right. Now, if you've drawn these two sides and you've measured them out, you should be able to measure this last side. The, what was it called again? Starts with an H? The hypotenuse. I know it's a bit of a tongue twister. I promise you'll get used to it. Okay. How long is the hypotenuse? How long did you measure? Five centimeters. Is it exact? Like, it's a, is it 5.1? Is it 4.9? <laughs> so depending on how accurately you measure, these two will give you how accurate this last side is. And I will show you why. Let's see how Pythagoras' theorem works with these three sides and how they relate. Because in fact, we don't even need to rely on a ruler to measure this side. We can use Pythagoras to do it. If you've got another color, again, you might hear me saying this a lot. Extra colors are really handy. So if you do not have any extra colors with you at the moment, it's like, I have 15 black pens. Then I highly encourage you to get a few other colors, even if it's just a highlighter or something like that. It just helps you to communicate a little more clearly. I'm gonna name these A and B and C, okay? So in this case, for this particular triangle that we've all drawn now, right? What is A squared? A squared is 3 squared, which is equal to what? Yeah, that's equal to 9. Very good. So 3 squared is equal to 9. Okay. In Pythagoras' theorem, the next thing I do is I say plus b squared. That's the next shorter side. In this case, b is 4. So b squared is 4 squared. What's that equal to? Yeah, 16. Very good. 9 plus 16. Now, we know what 9 plus 16 is, right? It's 25. Which, as you can see, this is what we looked at right at the start with things that are not thirds, right? This is, in fact, not just 25. We could write that as 5 squared or C squared, right? So you can see 
this works here. And in fact, three, four, and five, the fact that they do that is really cool. These three numbers kind of hang together as buddies, right? And because they're connected by Pythagoras' theorem, we actually say three, four, and five, we give them a special name, right? Whenever you, you talk about something over and over again, you give it a special name rather than just to say, hey, you know, that guy with cool hair and he's like taller than everyone. We say Merrick, because that's just so much faster and more efficient, right? So we give these guys a name rather than saying, you know, those numbers that do the thing when they are in the triangle. So we call these guys a Pythagorean. Uh, when, when you've got three children and they're all born together at the same time, we call them triplets, right? They're like kind of the same. These are not the same. So we would kind of want to say triplets, but not quite. We call this, do you have your hand up because you know the word or are you asking a question? No, I know the word. What's the word? Triad. Very good. Triad is when you have three things, they're different, as you can see, three, four, and five, but they are together in this particular relationship. Three, four, and five are a Pythagorean triad. Full stop. That's kind of neat. Okay, now at this point, you've worked really hard, well done. Um, you've got this huge, big idea in your head, and if it's kind of like feeling a bit funny in your brain in the moment, that's okay, because for many of you, this is the first time you've encountered it. Others of you, you're like, no, no, I'm quite comfortable. I've met, I met this before, no big deal, right? Well, to each of you, I'd say, number one, if it's not comfortable yet, relax. We're gonna spend lots of time over the next few years using this, it will get comfortable. For those of you who are already comfortable, you're like, no, I totally know this stuff, right? I would challenge you to see where else this can go. For example, these are squares, right? What do you think happens? Let's take these guys. No, I'm just going to leave them there. What do you think happens if instead of squares, I put another shape? Like say, oh, I don't know, a semicircle? Do you think that works? Don't, don't try cutting that into pieces. That will be a nightmare, okay? But do you think it might be true that you could add up those two semicircles and get that semicircle? Pythagoras' theorem is a really deep cave to explore, and we're going to look at lots of it over the next, well, week and a bit, and also in year 9, 10, and 11. Did you have a question, Mick? What sort of circles do they have ratios and diameters? Um, radius and yes, so the radius is from the middle to the edge, and the yeah. diameter is from edge to edge. It's the longest distance across. Okay.